Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be unboxing the N-Scale Woodland Station. This is kit number PF5207 in the Landmark Structure Series by Woodland Scenics. And this kit was a gift to me from my good friend Boondocking with Dennis. He has a YouTube channel and I encourage you to check it out. The link is in the description below. So for today's video, I'm just going to be unboxing this kit and checking it out. But very soon, I will be building it for use on my N-Scale switching layout. Although that is primarily a freight layout, I have decided to include a trolley line from the residential neighborhood down to the yards and to the main line. So this woodland station claims to be architecturally accurate. It has pre-assembled walls, intricate molded in detail and accessory, and it includes a variety of dry transfer decals. So the footprint on this one, it's a little over four inches wide, almost three inches deep, and two and a half inches high. And that's something you gotta love about N-Scale. A structure that small can fit almost anywhere. So you can see when I pull it out of the box, it has two main things. It has a bag of parts and it has an instruction sheet. And when you open up the instruction sheet, you're going to find several other things are included. This is a sheet of blackout paper that you can use for some of the windows. And then you have some clear sheet which is going to be used for windows and it has this protective paper so you want to keep that with it and then it has this sheet of dry transfer decals and this includes signage for the station and advertising uh, railroad signs and logos for four different railroads the Rio Grande, the Northern Pacific, the Santa Fe and the Union Pacific and that has its own protective film and you definitely want to keep that together otherwise these decals could transfer themselves onto something you don't want them on okay so I'm gonna set all this aside for now while I take a look at the kit parts themselves So this small plastic bag contains two screws that will later be used to attach the roof to the main part of the building. I can set that aside until needed. Okay, so I've arranged all the parts just to make it a little easier to see what we've got here. The first one that of course catches my attention is the main building itself. And unlike a lot of end scale kits, they've made this as almost piece. Um, usually the end scale kits you get uh, all of the walls as flat pieces that have to be assembled. So it just has this main building and then it has this separate bay window which will go on the front and everything is located with tabs and such and you can tell that if you press this in now um, it'll actually be permanently joined and I don't want to do that yet because it's going to be easier to paint these separately. And then the next piece is the platform which has a wood beam texture molded in and it has a set of steps leading to the ground. And once again, you can see that everything will eventually be located with tabs. So the assembly on this kit should be very easy. You just don't want to press that in too soon or you're not going to get it back off. And then the roof is molded as a single piece with the shingle textures built in and a little overhang for the bay window. And on the underside here, you can see this is where those two screws would go when you attach that to the building.
And I appreciate that they actually molded those as separate pieces. A lot of times um, in 3D printing, which I've been getting into, people model that uh, the entire building, including the roof and the base, is a single piece. And that would make it harder to paint. You can see that I'll have to get under here to paint the eaves and to paint the siding and the window trim. But overall, I like how they uh, differentiated the main pieces. And because this is one piece, you won't have to worry about making sure the walls are square, which can often be a difficulty. And then there's six sprues with a variety of detail parts. Some of these are going to be roof supports. There's benches for the passengers who are going to wait. It looks like there's a vending machine. The kit includes a baggage cart and a semaphore, which are some really nice details. It also includes a couple of street lamps. And just looking at it now for the first time, it's a little hard to know what all of the pieces are, so I'm not going to try to point them out individually. But you can see for a small building, this is going to end up having some really nice detail with it. Here has some of the street lamps, which are really nice. They're like an older style. They're not made to light up, though, I will say that. If you want street lamps that light up, you'll have to purchase something else. And I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that yet. So some N-Scale kits come with just a very simple instruction sheet. Others give you a more thorough booklet. And this is one of the kits that goes more thorough. So they start by telling you everything that's included. Um, they tell you what kind of tools and supplies you're going to need. And if you're already a hobbyist, there's nothing unusual on that list. It's pretty basic stuff. And then each step here, it's a combination of written instructions and illustrations of how to put stuff together. And glancing through it, what I really like about it is they tell you not only the order to do things in, but they include the decaling and the painting and a lot of other stuff that will go with it. Um, sometimes when you're making a model, trying to figure out um, the order of steps can be a little challenging, but they seem to have made this one pretty easy and straightforward. Uh, the illustrations are very clear, easy to understand. Uh, glancing at the writing, it looks like that's written by somebody who actually knows English and has given you a good idea of how to proceed. And so, you know, it continues with the building of the station, attaching it to the platform, and then putting together some of these little accessories I talked about, like the luggage cart and the semaphore. And then they finish it off with some illustrations of where all the little detail parts go. And finally, some tips and techniques on painting and weathering which is again pretty basic stuff, but if you're new to the hobby, it's going to be good to know. And it's also really cool to see exactly how the semaphore needs to be painted because that will be one of the more uh, detailed parts. And that's actually the kind of painting I enjoy the most. I really like picking out all the small details with lots of color. And then here they do talk about, of course, it's an ad for more of their kits. And I just heard about this, in fact, the other day for the first time, this Just Plug lighting system. And I might look into using that. I don't know yet, but um, that'll be the subject of another video. So if I go with my plan to use this station on my switching layout, this will end up being its home. And I apologize about the lighting, that's something I still need to work on for this layout, but hopefully it's showing up clear enough here. But my thinking if I use it here is going to be a residential area. I thought they could have their own train station here. I would end up using the trolley instead of the larger passenger cars or the RDC just because of the small nature of this layout. And this would not be hanging over into the abyss. When I put the final foam in, it will fill in this corner. So this thing will be on solid ground. And then what I think I could do, because this first trolley lines up very nicely with the station, is I could actually just build a wood platform extension going back to the second trolley unit. So that would make this the residential side of the plateau. 
And then this would be an industry which I still have to determine what it would be and either design or build a structure for it. And that would give the switching engine somewhere to pick up and deliver freight cars from. And so the biggest challenge of doing this will be blocking out the track so that I can have two locomotives on here at once. This is just a standard DC system. So the track will need to be divided into blocks. And then what I would do is build more of an urban commuter kind of station down here in the yards. And the trolley would drop passengers off there and then they could get on a mainline train and go to another layout. And there may be future modules of this, so that's a distinct possibility. And if I decide not to go with this plan, then this station will find a home on the larger loft layout that I plan to build upstairs. Although I'm still designing that layout, I know I want to have at least one rural station, and this kit would be absolutely perfect for it. So I'd like to end this with a final thank you to Dennis for sending me this awesome kit and stay tuned for future videos where I will build this kit and place it on my N-Scale layout. Thanks for watching.